Okay, here we go. Jeff Passan is reporting that Corey Kluber and the Red Sox are in agreement on a one-year contract, and there's also a club option for 2024. I would have talked about this in the live stream that I just did this morning, but of course, Corey Kluber and the Red Sox just had to wait until the stream was over, so I figured I'd just make a separate video on it, but uh, I love this move for the Red Sox. I actually predicted it in my free agent predictions coming into the offseason. They're all pretty terrible for the most part. But this was one I was pretty confident about because the Red Sox have been after Corey Kluber for the last couple of years. So I figured, you know what? He was with the Yankees. He was with the Rays last year. He has a home in Massachusetts. He's only, you know, he's not getting any younger, of course. But Corey Kluber, I thought it just made a lot of sense to just go play for the Red Sox at this point in his career. So out of all the predictions I made, this was one I was pretty confident about. And I really like this move overall. Uh, Corey Kluber last year had himself a pretty decent season. What I really liked about Kluber last year is that he made 31 starts. I love when a pitcher can just make 30 starts. You know, sure, I love a good looking ERA. I love a lot of strikeouts. I love a low walk rate. But when a guy is available and he's making his starts, that is something I appreciate very much. Now, the ERA was a 4.34. That's pretty league average for the most part, maybe a little higher than league average. But the FIP was pretty solid at a 3.57. Now, with Corey Kluber, in the first half, he was way better over 94 innings. He had a 3.73 ERA. But in the second half, over 70 innings, he had a 5.14 ERA. But again, if we are looking at FIP, in the first half, it was a 3.42. And in the second half, it was a 3.77. So he pitched better than what the surface numbers are telling us. So Corey Kluber, what I like about Corey Kluber as well is he doesn't give up a lot of exit velocity. And these are the kind of pictures. This is another reason I thought the Red Sox would be kind of hot on his tail where they love these guys Heim Bloom loves these guys that doesn't give up a lot of exit velocity as you can see he was in the top 20 percent in average exit velocity top 25 percent in hard hit percentage and Bloom also loves guys that doesn't walk guys I mean honestly like that's why I love Greg Maddox so much he just never walked guys pinpoint control you know velocity is great and everything but I love a guy when he just isn't issuing free bases for these hitters. And he was right there at the top last year in the top 1%. Corey Gluber, he's going to throw a ton of strikes, not going to give up a lot of hard contact. Now, sure, is he going to be, you know, the Cleveland Indians, Corey Kluber? No, but he's still going to be, in my opinion, a very effective guy for the Red Sox rotation. And now, if we're looking at the Red Sox rotation, yes, there are question marks all over this rotation. Chris Sale, obviously, huge question mark. So, Hopefully, with Chris Sale, no fluke, just ridiculous injuries like falling off of your bike, you know, getting hit in the finger and your finger explodes at Yankee Stadium. Hopefully, none of that is going to happen with Chris Sale. But overall, his arm has been healthy. It's just these freak incidents that have happened with him. So hopefully, just a good season for Chris Sale if the Red Sox hang on to him. I'll talk about that in just a second here. But Corey Kluber, as you can see here, listed as the number two, Nick Pavetta, he a bit up and down last year, but did make 30 starts. And then Garrett Whitlock is going to be moving to the rotation uh, from the bullpen. And James Paxton is your number five. This rotation is full of question marks. Obviously, with Sale, what are you going to get with him health-wise? Pavetta, is he going to be able to have a bit more of a consistent season this year? Garrett Whitlock, we did see him start a bit last year. You know, he had some bumps. He ended up getting hip surgery at one point. So let's see how he goes here for, from here on out. And James Paxson, obviously, a lot of back issues. Let's see how he does. And then you got Brian Bayo, who I definitely think will be in this rotation. I mean, I'm not sure how things work out. But Brian Bayo, he showed a lot of promise last year with the Red Sox after he got called up. And he was really good in the minor leagues. So there's, while there is a lot of, while there are a lot of question marks, there is a lot of potential in this Red Sox bullpen. The one thing, or in the Red Sox rotation, sorry. In 2021, the Red Sox had three guys that made at least 30 starts. You had Nick Pavetta here, you had Eduardo Rodriguez, and you had Nathan Evaldi. Obviously, Erod and Nathan Evaldi are gone now. But my point here is that the Red Sox really need to get back to getting these guys to making their starts every fifth day. That is such a valuable thing. And Corey Kluber, from what he showed last year, should be able to do that. If he can give you 30 starts of just effective pitching, I think that's going to be a huge boost for this rotation. Really suffered last year. It had a lot of guys making spot starts last year, guys going down with injuries. So if you could get 30 starts from Chris Sale, 
Corey Kluber, and Nick Pavetta with guys like Garrett Whitlock, James Paxton, Brian Bayo contributing at the back end of the rotation. I think this Red Sox rotation could be really good next year. The bullpen is looking really good as well. You've added some really good names like Kenley Jansen, Chris Martin. You traded for Jolie Rodriguez. So the pitching side of things, I really like the Red Sox right now. I think there's a lot of promise here. Again, question marks, but there is some promise. Now, what are, where do the Red Sox go from here? Obviously, Raphael Devers is a huge question mark right now. Do you end up trading him? I think if you are not going to sign him to an extension, you got to trade him. Do I want to trade him? No, but I think you're going to have to if you can't come to terms on a deal. He's going to be a free agent eventually. Sure, could you keep him until the trade deadline? Yeah, but I think if you're the Red Sox, if you're you know forward thinking and you're looking into the future as well as the present, I think you need to ship him off and get some pieces in return that can help you now and in the future as well. But then there's also what I mentioned earlier with Chris Sale. John Heyman a couple of days ago reported that teams are checking on Chris Sale's availability. Now, on baseball trade values, he is not going to have a very good value. He has a negative $13 million value as of right now. He's basically an under the water contract at this point. He's being owed a lot of money at 27 and a half million for this year and next year there's a club option for the year after but but and obviously combined with the injuries as well that he's been having he's not been very reliable he's going to have a negative value so what really can the red sox get for him you know not really too much they would have to pay a good uh good chunk of that salary that he has moving forward so if you do want to get something in return could you pair him with a Raphael devers but then you know, at that point, the Red Sox are really just going to be a weaker team at that point, unless they can get something in return that can help the team now, as well as maybe a couple of prospects. If you do combine Raphael Devers, Chris Sale, and some money, you would be able to get a pretty decent package back, around $50 million worth of value. That could be a major league ready player and a couple of prospects as well. So there, it's going to be interesting. I don't think the Red Sox are done here. I think there are some other moves to be made. Hopefully the move that is made is Raphael Devers being signed to an extension. This guy, he's just the middle of the order bat that you just need right now with no more Xander Bogarts here. You got to find a way to keep Raphael Devers locked in. You know, seeing the Braves sign all of these guys to these contract extensions like Sean Murphy yesterday, it's just, oh my goodness. It's just kind of painful when, you know, you have a guy like Raphael Devers where, you know, you should have just signed this guy a long time ago, you know, to a 10 year deal. And here we are, but I am very interested to see what the Red Sox do moving forward. But in the end, I do like the way this rotation is looking. Could Kluber mean, you know, now that you have some more pitching depth, could this mean that Chris Sale, you could end up moving him in a deal? I would like to see him stay because I would like to see Chris Sale be a productive pitcher over a full season for the Red Sox. We haven't seen that now for years. So we'll have to just wait and see what ends up happening. But let me know what you think of the Corey Kluber deal. Let me know what you think the Red Sox do moving forward. But that's all I have for right now, everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.